Brutality within Russian army in Ukraine now worse than in hell. Although the Russian authorities work overtime to hide it, brutality by officers and soldiers in the Russian invasion force in Ukraine is now so bad that some veterans say things are worse than in hell, the product, they believe, of the entrance of so many former criminals into the ranks and their propensity to follow the moors of Russian streets. U.S. expert Paul Goebel said this. According to him, this is the conclusion of Olesya Gerasimenko of Vertska Media draws on the basis of conversations with veterans, their relatives and their defenders after the last three months of the fighting, and the picture she paints is truly disturbing and a sign that unit cohesion is weakening. The closer Russian forces are to the front lines and the rarer leave has become, the more officers and even some soldiers feel they can get away with anything, she says confident that no military prosecutor will appear and that they therefore have the power to act as they like up to and including torture, rape and murder. According to the investigative journalist, the problem of extrajudicial punishments, bullying and non-regulation relations has intensified and the longer the forces are on the front lines, the more serious things are becoming. Those with a criminal past are leading the way in applying the rules of the streets, but regular officers aren't far behind, soldiers say. Both groups view those who are weaker than they as somehow less than human and therefore appropriate targets for their anger. Some Russian soldiers are shooting themselves to escape and others, Gerasimenko says, are surrendering on occasions when there was no need for that only to escape the hell of service in the Russian military. Putin to interfere in presidential elections in U.S. Russian President Vladimir Putin will interfere in the 2024 U.S. presidential election, states Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Oleksiy Danilov. According to him, artificial intelligence has allowed Russia to significantly intensify its disinformation campaigns, which is a huge step forward for Moscow. The Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council is convinced that the scale of information interference will be much larger than before. Russia now has special units dedicated to every country where elections are taking place. The network of informants and agents of Moscow around the world is so large that removing Russian interference is impossible. The FSB continues to contract with European criminal groups, Danilov noted. The Times states that Russian agents spread 166 million pieces of disinformation about Ukraine weekly on various platforms. The presidential election in the U.S. is scheduled for November the 5th, 2024. According to forecasts, the main candidate for the Democrats will be the incumbent American leader, Joe Biden. The Republicans will nominate either Donald Trump or former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan recently stated that the White House is concerned about possible Russian interference in the 2024 presidential election. NBC News reported that Russia is already spreading disinformation ahead of this year's U.S. elections. Fake accounts and bots are being used to harm President Joe Biden and his Democratic colleagues. Russians sent 70-year-old T-55 tanks to attack Robotine. It ended badly. After a brutal four-month defense against a Russian force 10 times its size, the Ukrainian army's 110th mechanized brigade last Friday finally quit the ruins of Avdiivka in eastern Ukraine, just northwest of Russian-occupied Donetsk, according to Forbes. The 110th Brigade fought until it ran out of ammunition. It is noted that sensing weakness as the 110th Brigade retreated, the Russian army attacked in several sectors along the 600-mile front of Russia's two-year wider war on Ukraine. But not every Ukrainian brigade is as tired, outnumbered and ammo-starved as the 110th is. Ukrainian forces not only held the line last weekend, they inflicted heavy casualties on the overconfident Russian brigades and regiments, including at least one unit that tried to assault Ukrainian positions in the south in unupgraded 70-year-old T-55 tanks. That unit, apparently from the 42nd Motor Rifle Division, got wrecked as it crossed from west to east, a mile of flat terrain separating Russian lines from positions held by the Ukrainian Army's 65th Mechanized Brigade in Robotine, 
one of the larger settlements the Ukrainians liberated last summer. The 65th Brigade threw everything it had at the Russian assault group, which numbered dozens of 41-ton, four-person T-55s, 13-ton MTLB armoured tractors with room for 13 people and 13-ton BMP fighting vehicles with space for 11, firing cluster shells and anti-tank missiles and flinging explosive first-person view drones, the 65th Brigade defeated the attack and exacted some revenge for the men and women of the 110th Brigade who died defending Avdiivka, according to Forbes. As the dust settled, open-source analyst Andrew Perpetua counted all along the front line 28 damaged, destroyed and abandoned Russian tanks and fighting vehicles. He counted just six damaged, destroyed and abandoned Ukrainian tanks and fighting vehicles.